Hey everyone, my name is Courtney and I'm here with Alana and today we're going to be going through our Engineering 305 Presentation 5. So the focus of this video will be Design of Experiments or DOE. Um, the goal of a DOE is to understand the effects of different variables on other variables. Um, when we're looking at DOEs in jump, they center around um, a bunch of different things. They include factors, which are the independent variables, responses, which are which is the dependent variable of interest, um, and then the model, which could be comparative, full, factorial, fractional factorial, or response surface designs. The chosen model should be consistent with the goal of the experiment they are looking at. And then finally, the runs. Um, experiments that are run at different factor values called levels, and each combination is called a treatment. So the data set we'll be looking at is JUMP's popcorn DOE results data. The goal is to find the best way to microwave the bag of popcorn. The responses are the number of popped kernels and the total number of kernels in a bag popped plus unpopped. And finally, the factors are brand, cooking time, and microwave power. So what does it mean to do a design and to create an experiment? So we're going to talk about that now and we'll show you later how to do it in JUMP. Um, but first, doing this in JUMP, creating the design involves defining the responses, defining the factors, defining factor constraints, if necessary, adding interaction terms, so it's basically setting up your model, and then determining the number of runs that you want to have for your experiment. From the resulting data table generated by doing the steps above, the order in which you should do the experimental runs is then given to you, as well as columns provided to enter the results of each experiment. So now we're going to be talking about the underlying model for our popcorn data. So because we're modeling a proportion, we can assume that it's a binomial distribution and use a generalized linear model, which we set up here. And then the model, for our example, would look something like this whole figure, how you set up your y variables and your interactions here, and then you just hit run. So what are the reasons for doing a DOE? Um, you, would do that, you would do a DOE when you'd want to manipulate multiple inputs at the same time. It allows you to identify important interactions that may be missed when experimenting with one factor at a time, and you can confirm suspected input-output relationships. So what about doing a response surface method DOE? Um, basically, an RSM is just a more specific design of experiment that you can run with a more specific objective in mind. Um, it allows you to estimate interaction and even quadratic effects to give an idea of the shape of the response surface being investigated. Um, you can find improved or optimal process settings by doing this. You can also troubleshoot process problems and weak points. And finally, you can make a product or process less sensitive to external and non-controllable influences. So the last thing we're going to talk about before jumping into jump is profile and optimizing using response surface method. Um, you can look at the response surface by using the contour profiler and jump, which I have a picture over here for you. Um, the profile Profiler initially shows current predicted values, which in this case it's 396, and the desirability settings that are needed to meet that value, which is these red values here, and that's all given to you once you run your experiment. Um, and then Jump allows you to maximize the desirability, which adjusts the profile traces to produce the response value closest to the specified target. So you would just click this arrow and you click Maximize Desirability, and these values would change to show you the best one. And now I'm going to hand it over to Alana, who's going to demonstrate the popcorn DOE for you and Jump. So now we're looking at Jump at the popcorn DOE results data that Courtney referenced earlier in the presentation. And first it gives you your brands. We only have two brands, Top Secret and Wilbur. And then we have our different times that the microwave is being set to and the power um, that the microwave has. And then we have results of the number of kernels popped and then total number of kernels inside of the bag. So an easy way to look at the model that they already have set up inside of Jump is to click on this red arrow here where it says model and then run script. And it already has everything put in there, but one thing that we want to change is right here in the um, personality, we want to click on the generalized linear model, as Courtney said earlier, and then we're looking at binomial. So I'm going to click run. And then as you can see here, 
it's got the different p-values and the ones that are in this orangish color these are the most significant ones with this particular test so these are the ones that we would want to focus on if we wanted to do further analysis of this particular study and if we go down further as you can see there's no graph for the profiler that we talked about earlier so I'm gonna go up here this red arrow and click profiler and right here and then scroll down again and it pops up right here so these are giving a generalized understanding of what our better um, numbers would be so the number pops and then this will be the number popped with these particular ranges. So this particular brand, the top secret, a time of 4 and power of 7.5. But we want to look at the best option possible for this. So we're going to click desirability functions. And it opens it up a little bit more and gives us this desirability. But to go even deeper, we want to maximize our desirability. So the, this will be our max um, what we want for the um, most profit out of the number of pops. So it's giving us 0.96 as the number of popped. It's not 100%, but it's really, really close. And we're using top secret brand, time of 5, power of 8. So this is our best model. So thank you for watching our video. We hope this is giving you some more insight into how to use design of experiments inside of Jump.